All right, let's get back into it. Ooh, still cold. Ah, uh, yeah, furnace. Uh, furnace is out until Wednesday, so I might have to go get a uh, one of those uh, portable, like space heaters or something. All right, um, what are we doing? Yeah, we're not using that yet, but we will. Uh, so what I wanted to do, I think, I think we're just gonna pass props. This is, okay. It doesn't mind that. Oh, because it's, it's like any, okay, cool. Um, and then we get field and field state and form and all those things. Um, bound to text field. Oh, I see. What are we doing with on change here? Pass the event handlers to the hook. But not the components as they feel properly always has them use use input will call the provided on change onboard in addition to the default needed by react uh, hook form huh okay all right so this is using no this is using material UI oh right 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 so field is gonna have on change on it so how do I intercept? The change and change the behavior. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's um let's not worry about wait actually yeah how does that how's that supposed to work? Um lat long input props span so, oh right. So this is just this is this is two fields. I see. This is different than our use case. In our use case, we have one field. We want to split into multiple uh, inputs. Maybe. Hmm. It's very different. Like even what they're showing here. Two different inputs. Ah, just a little too late, Nate. Maybe if we look at an example. All right, so this is just gonna be top level and this is gonna be like, okay, picker, that's here. looks like this is do we have oh this is lib okay src is hopefully <laughs> nicer to look at there we go typescript uh okay so 
We're using use input here. We have a field. Picker component. Ah, but it's still like one thing. Where's this coming from? Mobile date picker or mobile time picker. Oh, I see. So this is just a wrapper around a single like React component. Um, hmm. I guess the thing to do would be to first define like a wrapper around the text fields that defines like not involving React Admin at all, and then wrapping that uh, component with our React Admin specific stuff. Yes. Yes, okay. I think that's gonna make sense. So what we're gonna do is, this is where I ha wish I had something like Storybook or something like we have with, uh, um, Uh, Daily Jewel, the other project from, from last year. But I, I don't have that set up, but I'm not going to set that up right now. So if we do like um, const, uh, yeah, duration input uh, something. Um, Let's call it inner. Yeah, there we go. And we'll say I'll take the same props. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so this is wrong. What we want to do is we want to just have. We don't need a dev yet. We're going to take this bit. And this bit is going to live inside of inner instead of this function. Yep, it's declared but never used. Okay, and we'll have to figure out the, like, we'll have to unpack the props and stuff. Uh, but that's fine. So now here, we just need to wrap inner duration input and pass in all the things. Uh, no helper text. What is the type for error? It's a boolean. Okay. So I guess we do need to pass in helper text. Okay, so in that, in that case, what, what we'll do is we'll just do this and this. Does that make this happy? Sort of. False or field error or undefined is not assignable to type. We're talking about helper text, string or false. Ah. Okay, so this needs to be like message. Okay. And then property error doesn't exist on type. Huh. Does error exist here? Yes. I see. So there's a prop that we need here. Wait, which text field props are we? Oh. OK. 
can we can we just say the energy duration input takes props that match the props for uh, the material UI text field? Nope, nope. Why? Why? Why tap? <laughs> I keep on hitting tab instead of back, backspace because they're right next to each other on my keyboard. Uh, fields. See, it wants the autocomplete text field props, but that's this. Wait, is the issue? Field props. I don't know that this is the right thing. What if I remove this? Yeah, from React Admin. Hmm. Let's just do this just temporarily. Let's uh, let's also go look at the uh, the uh, documentation again. I think what I'm gonna focus on doing right at this moment is making this look like uh, this. Uh, well, not that, but mm, like this. Right, so if we do something like this, but we use our component instead of text field. Let's try doing this. On blur is assigned but not used. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I guess potentially those things are useful, so we can we can just do what they're doing here as well. Comment that out and yeah, there we go. Okay. Now we, we are essentially, we're, we're implementing kind of a, like an interface, a, um, an adapter, if you will, between React Admin and this inner component, uh, which I think I mean, inner duration input is okay, but f I think what's gonna make sense to do, hey, you caught it, Nate. Nice. Uh, what I think is gonna make sense to do is to uh, rename this to match, um, like all of the underlying UI components from MUI are just whatever field. So if we rename this to be like duration field, that at least is consistent. It's unfortunate that and then in React Admin, there's also a field that is uh, a different kind of thing. But names are hard. Okay, so that updated that. Now we need to fix this code. Um, and we need to figure out the type here. So we kind of, we can, we can see some of it, right? It's all of this stuff. Um, it should really just be the I'm trying to control click that. There we go. This type extends text field variance. Oh no, that's default function text field. It has a type argument. Um, interesting text field props aha okay there is a text field props that is exported from from MUI uh, there we go so let's do this and we can 
Ah, but it's different from this one. <laughs> Hold on. So is this? No. Um, can we import it from here? Text field props. Okay, now we're just getting a complaint that we're not using props, but that's not a big deal because we'll do that. And then we parse the duration. Uh, really, we can just, we can directly do that and do milliseconds as well. There we go, there we go. And then, um, what is name? Name of, okay. Okay, that makes sense. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of the on changes for right now until we figure out how we're gonna actually do that. And then, yeah. Error and touched. Touched, it does not exist. Try again. Oops. Yeah, try again. What, what are we passing here? Okay. I see. Right. So, so this is this is something from uh, when th this code was directly inside of this component. So that's that's already translated for us, right? So when we get error, that is that. No. Nope. Um, yeah, it should just be error. And then helper text should just be helper text. Right, we're passing that in, helper text. Um, one one thing I'm seeing here though is that we're we're kind of we're gonna repeat the helper text multiple times. We probably don't want to do that. We might instead. Um, we might change from using a text field to something else. So I have to think about that. But let's get rid of this. We do actually want helper text. Yep. Uh, but we're gonna need to do something here to display it. Yep. That is something and then milliseconds yeah and then value is unknown because okay text field props what does this say uh, variant extends filled text okay standard text field props Extends base text field props. Base text field props. Should be a value. But it must just be unknown. Okay. So we'll say it's a string. Now, this bit, changing the... Uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds back into the string is something we still will we'll need to do. Like we had, we, we're not at, we're not responding to the user changing the values here. So we still need to do that. But now we have something that, that doesn't have any errors, <laughs> any type errors. Uh, and we can actually like add this to the UI and see it, which, Hey, we're like an hour and a half in let's, let's see a result. Uh, so it's in the stream silence detection input, uh, we have this array input in simple form iterator, and we're using a text input to show start and end. So we're going to replace that with duration input. Oh 
yeah, we're importing something we're not using. There we go. So maybe this works. We have things. So this would be hour, minute, second, millisecond. <laughs> uh, so this is, it, it, it sort of works. Let's, uh, let's figure out how we can make this actually look a little bit better. Uh, right. So I think that's going to be down to how we're doing things here. So I think we need to look at the material UI docs. To figure that out. Hmm. Let's see. Const common props. Yep. So that's a start. I'll spread those common props. So these are our props that we can pass into all of the uh, fields that we're showing. Now it's complaining because some of these things don't exist. Yeah, variant is incompatible because string, yada, yada, yada. Um, so again, this is the same situation where like, oh, variant is just some string. Uh, but it's not just some string. So if we say at const, as const, hey, the error goes away. <laughs> so if I save that, what does that do? Nothing. There we go. Took a second to reload. So that that is a thing. That's not even a bad thing. Now, if I click this, nothing happens because again, I've not hooked up the, the on change. Um, I did want to have these be editable though, so that you can go in and refine uh, these. Something else we could do is actually highlight the segments here that are selected in our visualization. That might be helpful. Uh, or have like a filter, like hide the ones that aren't selected or something. So we could do that. Uh, but I don't think that's essential right now. This is something I wanted to tackle while I was thinking of it uh, today and because it's going to be useful in several places where we're showing fields that have durations. Okay, so uh, what's going to be interesting here is that we are probably also going to have max values um, for here, but they'll be different for some fields versus others. Like there won't be a max for hours, but there'll be 60 second, um, like 60 minutes, 60 second maxes for these. Although we may implement that logic in the on change. Look, look at that later. Um, so other things we need to do here, let me, let me get the material UI docs up. I, there it is. Uh, let's see. Loading label, helper text, accessibility API. So we're currently using text field. Here's the API for that from MUI. It's a convenience wrapper for the most common cases. We, net, we may not be in a common case anymore. Um, yeah, so the, the text field control, like it has a form control, input label, field input, you know, all of these things. We may uh, want to just like use like an input form helper text. 
one of the things I want to do is I want to have these these inputs kind of in a single row. So in line. Yeah, I suspect that's what we need to do. We need to look at input. And default value disabled. Into dormant could be interesting. So we could put like hours and minutes and seconds on the, the end of the, the input field. Margin, multi-line name, on change placeholder required rows um, we can set that this all of these these are required there we go that should be good we'll say if this field is required then all of the subfields are required um, we can probably use SX to change the styling to make it in line if we can't otherwise do that. Let's uh, let's look at the component demo. So that'll take us back to the text field page. And we can look at inputs. Oh yeah, we can also turn autocomplete off. Uh, somewhere, I guess in the wrapping form. Um, hmm, I wonder. Can we can we control autocomplete here? Is it autocomplete or autocomplete? Bring this tab closer to where our uh, tab containing the UI is. I mean, it shouldn't autocomplete anyway because it's a number field. That's probably not necessary. That's just me. <laughs> Remembering all the times I've had problems with autocomplete interfering with things. Um, yes. Yes. Okay, inputs. Do I want to wrap this in a box versus having the fragment? We potentially, um, for like styling everything together, that might be helpful. Let's, um, let's do that. then we'll need to import this. Oh, doesn't know what that is. Okay, so we'll come over here. There you go. Um, and then, yeah, so we're gonna change this to use input, I think. And it should know how to, nope, doesn't know how to import that. Um, we don't need text field anymore. But we still want the props, I think. I think it'll make sense to say that this component takes the same props that text field does. Unless we can think of, find a different interface that is good. So what does that look like? How does that change how this is rendered out? We're reloading. Hmm, it's thinking. While it's doing that, we probably want some styles somewhere, potentially. So I'm noticing like in their example, this this is, well, I don't know what that does. That is interesting. Um, but we should be able to like style the inputs. Well, we'll see. Is, is this? Is this broken? Here 
errors. Undefined is not a function. Undefined is not box.js. Undefined is not a function. Interesting. Well. That is odd. Movie material box. So you would think that would work. Let's, let's take a closer look at that error. Create in default. That's odd. Oh, and Firefox is frozen. Well, give that a minute. I have confused it. Hmm. <clears throat> Are we back? Let's close a couple things here. That is interesting. Maybe if I just do a full refresh. Undefined is not a function. Box.js line eight. Very odd. Well, fine. Let's uh, move the box. See if that changes things or if it's something else that's actually the problem. Uh -huh. Huh. Apparently, either the, the other tab takes a minute and then freezes Firefox, or opening the, this file, this little tiny file, actually might, I think it's a small file, uh, seems to freeze Firefox, which is unfortunate. Okay. Maybe let's not do that again. Let's refresh. Um, that's odd. Let me go restart Vite. Restart the front end container. Yeah. In fact, I think I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the change that I just had with the box because I think that will be helpful. And then. See, it's, it's saying it's updating stuff, but uh, I think maybe we'll just restart the front end container. It's been running for a day. Um, I think, I wanna say that, um, did I have the HMR stuff fixed during the last stream? I might not have. Uh, what I ended up doing is the, the thing that I said I would probably need to do, which is to, um, um, have VS Code running inside of uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, in in my particular use case, right, where I'm running uh, WSL Docker on Windows, and so the containers are running in WSL, uh, so I just need VS Code itself to be, like, running inside of WSL, so it's, like, interacting, and I have the, the source code checked out, like the folder that I'm working in also in WSL. And having all that, I was able to turn back on HMR and all of the, uh, and I had to go into Nginx and add uh, um, like support for WebSockets. I feel like I've explained this before, so maybe this was something that I had working on the last stream. I just, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's, it's mostly working now. Like it, it had been reloading as I was making changes over here. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna, let's 
let's uh let's reload again yeah undefined is not this is so odd type error undefined is not a function box.js line eight is an interesting statement MUI material box yeah yeah uh huh are we overridable component box type map like this this seems right so let's look at the api docs import box for material ui movie material box and there's a demo and okay sure and I thought I was looking at the API. Okay. Um, yeah, is component required? But it's 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 failing to tell us that it's required. Okay, I I don't. I mean, field set might be appropriate, actually. Let's just see what Copilot's nonsense uh, actually does. It's also interesting that this error, like normally when you get like a JavaScript error like this, it uh, like crashes the React admin and that's like handled. It's interesting that that's not happening. So it looks like the error is, it's calling create theme, like when box.js is loaded. Huh. Firefox is also frozen again. If, uh... yeah, there you go. It's more obvious now. Hmm. Oh, is it back? Nope. Yes. Why can't I set a breakpoint here? Oof. Um, so, if we pause on exceptions and refresh. Yeah, undefined is not a function. But the browser's frozen again. Okay, at least I can see. Okay, uh, not responding. Okay, there we go. I mean, it's still not responding, but at least I'm getting it some some indication, so I'll be able to tell when it when it's back ah okay yeah there we go create theme so create theme apparently is undefined which is interesting it's being imported from dot dot slash styles dot dot slash style so in this folder is there styles so there should be like an index yes okay um Export star, export things. Theme ID. So what is this doing? Okay, it is importing create theme. So where's create theme coming from? Default as create theme from create theme. Can I control click? No. Um. 
what do I want to do about this? Uh, probably the first thing I want to see is what version of Material UI are we on? Like, I mean, I could debug, you know, trace it down, figure out why that's happening, but there shouldn't be anything that is on me that would cause this kind of error, in my opinion. Um, we don't directly have it in directly have a dependency on uh, material UI uh, because we we are just dependent on react admin so uh, looks like the current version is 4.16.12 so we'll just explicitly say that that's that um, and can we We probably should have an expl explicit dependency on Material UI, considering that like source code that we're writing is is importing from it. Uh, so let's see what version. So if we're gonna ins we're gonna start using 4.16.12 of React Admin. So this is a uh, like a mono repo. It has a bunch of different packages in it. Uh, and the one that has like all the UI components is RA UI material UI. And so it has its own package set JSON. And so it's dependent on MUI material uh, 502. So let's also be dependent on that. Um, You know, to some extent, all of these are, are, are dev dependencies because they're, they're all things that, yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna change that, but let's, um, let's see, I need to run it first locally to update the package lock. And then we'll, rest we'll uh, restart the container. So what we should see over here is the package lock gets updated. Yep. Uh, there we go. And yeah, at some point we're gonna get to that OTIO file. <laughs> at the rate we're going, I don't know if that'll be today, but I'm, I'm really excited about the idea of actually being able to export a file for uh, DaVinci Resolve to import. Finally. All right. All right, Vita is running. Let's uh, close some of these things and refresh this. Now, Doing this shouldn't really change anything, right? Because this is the same version. Um, what well, is the version that React Admin, this, this version of React Admin was depending upon? Now, I don't know with a, with a carrot, the exact version of React Admin that we had installed, but well, we'll see. It's not looking good. Mm. Okay, browser's responsive again. Let me clear this and we'll reload. Yeah, we're still getting that same error. So uh, this might be something where I'm just gonna Google it. Um, MUI. Firefox is not responding. Ah, uh, maybe. Hmm. So I feel like on these coding streams, like I think it's been like every stream I've had some issues with Firefox freezing. 
and it's not my normal experience. It's specifically like when the dev tools are open and messing around with the, the front ends that this starts to happen in certain cases. Um, okay, box, create a theme. Um, undefined is not a function. Hey. Asked one year, three months ago, modified five days ago. Something like that. Yeah, line five of box touch, yes. Uh-huh. 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 Ooh. Uh-huh. After other movie components. There's a problem with the beat cache. Try running your development command with the force fly to fix the cache issues. Interesting. Um, or removing the node modules that beat depths folder and restarting the server. So what we can do to effectively do that, because we're running Vite inside of Docker, is if we were to stop Vite, um, in the case of our front end, there's no state, it's stateless. It just, it mounts where our source code is, and then it mounts a, like an anonymous, anonymous volume over the node modules. So if I delete the container, yeah. And then we look at volumes. Um, hopefully, so another thing I can check really quick is inside of the source here, inside of front ends. Oh, I think by default I have it so that it hides the node modules folder. Let me reveal in file explorer. Front end, node modules. There shouldn't be, there should not be a dot vt folder. Yeah, there's a vt folder, but that's just the actual vt dependency. Okay, so good. Uh, so if I go back to Docker Desktop, and no, I can't really do it from there. Let's uh, do it from the command line. Uh, cd dot dot. Um, have I done this in this terminal before? Yes. Okay, good. So if the, uh, if the comment that the issue with Vite was like its dependency caching was busted, which kind of makes sense, right? Because we, uh, we've not used the box component for material UI. Uh, like we've not imported it anywhere before and maybe something something uh, uh, I don't know let's see okay we're waiting for things to show up let's let's go over to the browser there we go uh, so we'll see if this is true um, this one doesn't apply. Like we're already importing box last. I wouldn't think this solution would be apl applicable if we actually like remove, effectively remove node modules altogether. So we'll see. Is the front end up? We'll do this. We go here. Um, it's frozen. Yeah, of course. Hmm. Well. Oh. Okay, it's 
back. So if I refresh, we still get the same error. Now it's interesting, right? So I did try at one point to remove the import and this was working before without the import. Right? So, and Firefox is frozen. Let me just go and, so we got an HMR update. Okay. So we'll see uh, what's going on here. Okay, same error. Let's go ahead and um, restart. Yeah, bind mounts, inspect, volumes, null. It's interesting. Shouldn't it be volumes? PM app node modules. What if we delete this? And it's gone. Now let's also remove this NPM cache and let's restart. Clear the log. So I would have thought that that would have been the same thing that would have happened when I um, rebuilt and started the container, but perhaps not. <clears throat> At some point we should see some logs when Vite starts up. Yeah, and the, the front end is gone, of course. Let's uh, dock to bottom. Those logs. Yeah, still down. Uh, there we go. All right. So yeah, it was doing npm install. It did that. Added 717 packages, and then Vita is running. So hopefully, yeah, we don't have the error anymore. Now we have a different error. Hopefully, a different error. We have a, a frozen Firefox. Hey, the UI loads. That's something. Now, I am I'm not someone who's willing to leave well enough alone, I guess. So once we get Firefox back, what I want to do is I want to add bot. I like the import for the, the box component and add, add all that back and see if that breaks things again. Like, I'm pretty sure the issue is Vite. Okay, hey look, we have browser again. We have so many errors. Function components cannot be given refs. Attempts to access this ref will fail. Did you mean to use React at forward ref? Um, in duration input TSX line 22. What on earth are you talking about? Duration Field, yeah, that's this component, line 22. There, there is no, there is no ref here. So whatever that's talking about is not, uh, there we go. There are multiple input-based components inside of a form control. This creates visual inconsistencies. Use only one input base. Interesting. Input base, bunch of React stuff. Where is this coming from? Huh. Okay. Probably we need to wrap these inputs in uh, a form control.
I wonder if that's the thing we should do here. Instead of worrying about a box. Form control. Full width. Frozen, frozen browser. <laughs> uh. See, the thing is, and this is what I was, was going to say before, is that Firefox is the browser I use uh, and prefer. Um, it's just it seems specifically working on this front end. It doesn't. It doesn't like me. All right. What are the, what is this error? Yeah, I don't know what this is talking about. There, there's no ref going on there. Um, we still have a, an error here. We need to figure out. But uh, we're gonna take a little break, and uh, I'm gonna stretch my legs and uh, top off my water, and I'll be back in just a few, and we can uh, hopefully get this this input done and move on to other things. All right. BRB.